Meanwhile, the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights was quick to condemn last week's violence in Charlottesville, Virginia, as they should have, of course, but the commission statement only condemned the violence of one side, the white supremacists. The commission deliberately voted down a proposal, a statement that would have condemned violence from the other side, the left, Antifa. Why'd they do that? Peter Kirstenhaus serves on that commission, and he joins us tonight. Peter Kirstenhaus, thanks a lot for, for coming on. So, thanks for having me. Why would the commission, in, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, this wasn't just a thoughtless omission. This was an intentional decision not to condemn that violence. Why would they make that decision? I think it's because they um, approve of a certain set of political positions and disapprove of others. And if you are perpetrating violence in furtherance of something they approve of, well, maybe they'll look the other way. They refused to adopt a very reasonable amendment to the resolution that all of us voted on condemning the violence in Charlottesville. But the resolution was directed only at the Klan, the white nationalists, um, the Nazis, very appropriately so. That should have been condemned, and we of all course. voted uh, in condemnation. We also made note of the tragic death of Heather Heyer. But there's copious amount of reporting that shows that Antifa was also engaged in brutality. The New York Times reported it. A couple of media people were beat over the head by Antifa folks. They were using clubs. They were beating people. And so we made a very reasonable proposal, an anodyne proposal, if you will, that said, while we support peaceful protest, there was violent protest, and we condemn violence by all sides, including the so-called Antifa group. But the majority on the commission, 62, voted against it. Do they, I mean, that seems like such a reasonable proposal. Do they explain why they didn't vote for it? The only explanations we got were they didn't want to water down the original proposal, and one of the commissioners said, well, we don't want to necessarily condemn people who may have gotten carried away. Uh, that's an unsatisfactory response from the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. Our organic statute says that we deal with denials of equal protection. We're about right. equal treatment. And yet, if you have a disfavored viewpoint, and look, I have a disfavored viewpoint of the Klan, white nationalists, and all of those folks, but that doesn't give license to another group to beat you with impunity. By the same token, if you're going to condemn the Klan for engaging in violent behavior, you should, engage, uh, you should condemn other groups also for engaging in the same type of violent behavior. Because civil rights need to apply universally or they're not really civil rights. That's exactly right. We don't condone the behavior of the Klan, of the Nazis, of the white nationalists. That's not what this is about. This is about brutality visited against Americans and a separate standard applied to such brutality because, well, they're acting in a way of which certain people approve, whereas the other side is acting in a right. way or, or furthering of a position that we disapprove of. And that type of viewpoint discrimination is antithetical to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. You could easily say that if the situation were reversed 50 years ago, where would the United States Commission on Civil Rights be? Well, they would say, look, you know, you can understand why someone would be annoyed if someone tried to sit at his lunch counter he didn't want. I mean, you can't, I mean, the whole point of America is, at the ideal anyway, is that we apply the laws universally uh, according to citizenship. If you're an American citizen, the law treats you the same as any other American citizen. That's the point. And that idea seems under attack to me. It's under attack. It's under attack at the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, which we're engaging in identity politics to a poisonous degree. It's getting to be extremely dangerous. And we expect at least the government and the media to be objective and unbiased. And when the government and the media is not objective and unbiased, we're going down a very dangerous path. It can only end badly. And I would hope that we reverse this and seek to apply the law and seek to apply in fact, the, way, the way we condemn violence in a universal fashion, in an even-handed fashion. I agree with that. People are afraid of the mob, and they're afraid to stand up and say what's true. You're not, and I appreciate that. Thanks for coming on tonight. Peter Kirsten now. Thanks, Tucker.